Everyone meet my friend Nikki, and something she loves just as much as coffee is her mini doodle named Teddy, who is probably the cutest thing that ever came from 2020. I mean, look at him. How could you not fall in love? There he is, just weighing in at four pounds of fluff. And since I've watched him grow up over the past year, I figured it's time to do a painting of a true celebrity. <sighs> but deciding which photo, that was the hard part. I mean, come on, every photo he's in, he looks insanely cute. But I finally decided to go with this one. I finished setting up my paper for an 8x10. It's time to get started. I took this time to find the center line and draw a few guidelines. So I drew the crosshairs 5 in the middle and 4 inches up. Looking at a photo of Teddy, I just started doing a rough sketch, going around trying to get the basic shape of where his head would be, where his body is. And here's a photo overlaid on top with a low opacity so you can see that I was trying to get the rough shape of where he would be placed. Time to start the painting. I filled each cup with an equal amount of coffee, so I tried, and then I figured I'd fill it with a different amount of water to each one to make it lighter to darker. Then get your paintbrushes all set up, ready to paint. I poured a different amount of boiling water in each cup, depending on the light to darkness that I wanted. So if you want it lighter, it takes a lot of water, and if you want it darker, less water make it more concentrated but yeah I just try to separate it into four different shades I gave them a good stir and then I dabbled them on a scrap piece of paper so that I knew what each cup color looked like so I'd have that when I was painting I started by painting the background so as you can see it's a white wall so we just want to make sure that's really light so I grabbed the lightest color and then I just started to fill the background and then I used a little bit of water to help it drag across without adding a darker coffee color to it. I next moved on to the sheets. I've never really painted sheets before and definitely haven't watercolored them. So I was chasing the shadows, trying to get those the darkest areas. Then I let them sit and dry a little bit. And then I kind of smudged the hard corners out so that it wasn't super solid. And then I just went with the, the rest of the sheet. I went with a lighter coffee color, but darker than the wall. Tried to add a good light dark balance to it. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't really feeling this painting to start. Uh, I thought I messed up. I wanted to do a different subject matter, a different picture of the dog. But I pushed through it, and I want you to push through it, because who knows, you might just turn it around. It was time to paint Teddy, and I didn't really know what to do. So I grabbed the almost darkest color, the second one to the darkest, and I just decided I would paint his basic shape and get his, his silhouette laid out there. And then I could always add to it. I could always make it darker, lighter, however I saw fit. But this one definitely pushed my boundaries as far as talent goes and skill level. Once I finished painting Teddy, the base layer, I decided to move on to the lamp and the beer bottle on the nightstand. So I wanted it a little lighter so that it was further away from Teddy, almost behind him if you will. And it was a little tricky, but I like how it turned out. Uh, just. Do something or at least walk away while you let Teddy dry because you want him to be completely dry before you start adding paint and coffee color to him. This next part was entirely experimental. 
So I put a ton of instant coffee and just a few drops of water to make a really, really dark shade. And this was perfect for the nose and the eyes. I checked on Teddy and he was almost dry, but I wanted to finish up the bedding before I messed with him. So I worked on the bedding. It was it was really tough. It was, you know, I had to find a shade in between the front bedding and the wall, you know, without it just blending in and looking like a mound of nothingness. So it was tough. It was very experimental, but uh, I, I, I learned a lot from it. I don't know if I would do bedding again. Uh, it's definitely, uh, uh, it takes a lot of practice. So here you are watching my practice run. Grabbing the darkest color, I began to work on his little nostrils. I got those painted in place and I started with the shadow of his mouth. For a painting like this, where it's a, a, an animal or a person, you really want to look back at the reference photo, almost non-stop. You want to look at that, look back at your painting, look at that, look back at your painting. So I tried to follow the flow of his natural fur on his face because to the owner or someone even, you know, meeting the dog for the first time, you're going to see these things. They're just, you know, definitive trademarks of this dog or that person. And uh, Teddy had very distinct uh, flow of his fur and very distinct eyes. So you really want to capture those because if you don't capture the facial features correctly, it's not going to look like that animal. It might look like a dog, but it's not going to look like Teddy. So I captured his eyes. I captured his nose as best I could and then while that dried I just decided I would mess with you know the hair around his nose the hair up on his head and just keep going from there so for something like this uh, I kept working but I kept letting it dry taking a couple breaks and moving around I think that's the smartest move because you don't want to put a lot of coffee paint on there and warp the paper or it goes through the paper and you make a mistake you've come this far so Take your time and we'll get through this together. But just um, when, you, when you're putting the fur down, the, the more random, the more random in design, the better. You don't want it really symmetrical because, you know, he's so fuzzy. He's just not symmetrical. It just won't happen no matter how much you brush him, I'm sure. But uh, he's the cutest little thing. So I just started adding fur everywhere. And then uh, a little dark coffee around his mouth. It helps give the crease that his mouth is there with a little fur going over it. And just keep checking back at the reference photo and have fun with it. So sit back, relax, and uh, I'll put this on hyper speed so you can see my technique.
Here's the finished painting. Can't wait to hear what Teddy thinks of his portrait. If you'd like to color your own Teddy, there's a downloadable version in the description and on my website. I left the name off the dog tag so you can write in your own. Let's get roasted.